Yuri, that's unfucking believable. This narrator hates sex. That's the only explanation for it. She talks about coming, and what does he do? He's like, no, that's the wrong way to put it. You idiot! Pick up on her subtle verbal cues. This never did come naturally to me. I've been able to prove so much thanks to you. You're really the example I was chasing after. Uh, is that so? Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling. I'm so glad I got the chance to share my writing. Give me that side eye though, girl. I never thought it would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. Can't believe that you're so good at something you've never even shared it with anyone. It's kind of a shame. And in this case, I'm not talking about the poetry, girl. It's a shame you have not shared that sweet JJ with me. Come on, girl. Cough it up. Let's do this. No side eye. Maybe, but it's not like I really had a choice. Wait, what? Now she's saying we... Now she is accusing us of Cosbying her. The subtext here is all over the map. Yeah, what do you mean? I'm very confused, girl. Well, Yuri smiles sadly. Pete, during lunchtime, I eat by myself. Did you know that? No, we'll just come eat with Pete. It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always Holy have some books shit, with Pickles, me. was that a sub? Poseidon, thanks very much for the subscription. Welcome. That, that was uh, like five months in a row. Also, hey, good time with the subscription to mention. We are doing a little December holiday giveaway, too. Everybody who subscribed to the channel in December has a chance to win some free games and, like, some pretty decent stuff here. Just a reminder, so, you know, thinking about it, feel free to drop that. Specifically a Twitch Prime sub. I should prefer the Twitch Prime sub as well. Be fiscally responsible. Use that freebie on Perfidious Pete. I'm not worth paying for. I'm really not. Even with my sweet Yuri voice. I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it anyway. But books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. Clock Tower gifted you a sub? That's the gift that keeps on giving. Do we have to sign up for Instagram or something in order to win? Nope, just be subscribed to the channel. That's all you need to do. Tis the season, chat. Let's get some stabbies in there for Clock Tower and Poseidon. People you want to fall in love with, like Perfidious Pete. Or people you know would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day. Even though I live in a lonely, miserable, bitter wasteland of existence and I really wish someone would just talk to me or touch me. You know? Oh, I know. Trust me, girl. Those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. Why would anybody make fun of your body type, though? I honestly find, like, that that's literally impossible. Narrow waist, large breasts, good shoulders, nice hips. There, there's nothing to make fun of here. Smooth porcelain complexion. Long, flowing locks. There, there's really not a lot to... What, what are you, you going to make fun of here? I don't get it. And and they don't hate me for acting like know-it-all. People say that about you? You tell me what people say that about you, Yuri, and I swear to God I will hunt them down, murder them, and bring their still-beating heart and lay it at your feet. She has an anime body type, too big of a head and weird proportions. Don't forget the neck, Pete. Oh, trust me, Chad. I didn't forget the neck. Why do you think I chose Yuri? She has the best neck. Long, elegant, delicate. I just want to lick it. I'm not a know-it-all, Pete. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. Okay, now what we need her next line of dialogue to be is to just say, accept you, and then give me the side eye. I don't know how to make people seem see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings, and all I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now. Give me the side eye. Ah! I mean, full-on smile face is good, too, but side eye is what I really want. That I started sharing it with you. 
You have a lot of answer options this game, or most of the conver the conversations are all on rails, Colonel Sherbert. If you saw this woman in real life, you'd be freaked out because her proportions are hideous, her head is too big, her eyes are huge, and her mouth is tiny. Purple hair? Anybody can have purple hair. I'm not buying the purple hair. That I really understood what was missing all this time. Yes, you know what you were missing? Some deep dicking. That's what you were missing, and I am more than happy to provide said dicking. I haven't really done anything. See, this is me being like, girl, if you want to really like take this relationship to the next level, though, we need to get naked and sweaty. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful. Yeah, because I've been super respectful in that I just the constant awkward passes at you. Super respectful. That's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Pete. I speak too slowly. I second guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things, but every time, you've always treated me just like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. So what you're saying is, we're in love now, and again, you're gonna have all of my babies. Could we start with the babies, like, sooner rather than later? No sex before marriage? You go to hell, Poseidon. You go to hell and you die. I don't care if you did just sub. That is not cool. I do like the way her wrists bend. You know, I never noticed that, chat. Actually, it is a little awkward. It looks like she may have a broken wrist. Huh. Seriously, though. Okay, hold on a second. We're going to take a moment from the gameplay to talk about the no sex before marriage thing. Personally, I think that's a hugely risky proposition. Why would you want to get married to someone to whom you don't know if you're sexually compatible? That's a big part of any long-term relationship. I mean, sex, it's a big deal. It's not the only deal or even the most important deal, but it's still a big deal. Marrying somebody you haven't slept with? Uh, nah, it just seems like a really stupefyingly risky proposition. It's like buying a car without test driving it. You know what? Take that bad boy out on the freeway and run it around a little bit before you decide, yeah, this is the one I want to buy. Anyway, back to this. I treat you, well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri, because you are a purple-haired goddess. You are the sun that uh, lights the skies above the world that is Perfidious Pete. If other people don't see it that way, then screw them. You, on the other hand, screw me. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends, lifelong sexual friends, and I would say I've had at least one success. Wouldn't you? Uh, um... Give me that side-eye, girl. If you put it that way... Yeah. Give me that side-eye... Oh, she did the blush thing. We really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her head in her hands. But this time, she's smiling as she does it. Do you want to show me your poem? Yeah. Holy shit, Pickles, was that a sub? Das Hootenheim, thanks very much for the subscription. Everybody, let's get some stabbies in chat for Das Hootenheim. I do. Let me get it for you. When she says, let me get it for you, I'm assuming she's not talking about the poem. All right, this poem is called Beach. Well, better than Bleach. A marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of Earth chaotically meets the surface, under a clear blue sky and expanse of bliss, but beneath gray rolling clouds and endless enigma, the easiest world to get lost in is one where everything can be found. One can only build a sandcastle where the sand is wet, but where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give in, or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same. Yet we still build sandcastles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle, yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foamy tendrils. Turn back, and I abandon my peace to erode at the shore. Drift forward, and I return to Earth forevermore. They actually got one rhyme in here. Alright, I mean, that's okay. Protagonist, thanks very much for the cheer as well. It's a holiday cheer. Merry non-denominational holiday. Dasu Nime's been around for a while. I know. We can still get some, you know, stabbies for him. 
Is it Das Hutenheim or is it Das Schutenheim? Probably Das Schutenheim. How do you get bits? Uh, I think you can get ad bits just by watching an ad. Yuri, um, I'm aware that the beach is kind of an inane thing to write about, but I did my best to take a metaphorical approach to it. Yeah, okay, so for it's German, the Schutenheim. It's German for the Schutenheim, all right. By the way, Yuri's poem, Beach There, that was entirely one big sexual metaphor. She was talking about how wet and foamy she is on the edge of something. She's saying she's wet and foamy because she's on the edge of sexual congress with Perfidious Pete. Say that you didn't even want to write about it. Oh, you haven't heard? After yesterday, Natsuki and I, well, it was amusing that we wrote about something similar in such different ways. So Natsuki wanted us to write about the same topic as each other again. I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles or thought processes. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise that she'd want to do something like that. Yeah, Natsuki does seem a little hyper competitive. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request. But... Well, I suppose it's... Oh, she thrust the breasts at us. That's right, girl. Give us that bad boy cleavage years. I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know. Especially when it's a metaphor for your sexual arousal vis-a-vis -vis me, Perfidious Pete. It's good for me to cow my thoughts once in a while. I think I agree. You know what they say is a really good calming agent? They say a mind-shattering orgasm can really kind of relax you and mellow you out. Just uh, putting that out there. Thanks for sharing. Just use that Prime sub, have it hanging out for a while. Always use your Prime sub. Get some of that cash back from Amazon. Jeff Bezos has enough money. Spread the love. Who should I show my poem to next? Uh, let's do Natsuki since they got like a contest thing going here. Let's see how hers stacks up against Yuri's beach. Meh. I guess you really haven't learned anything after all. Honestly, I don't know why I get my hopes up in the first place. I uh, didn't think this one was that bad. What did I do wrong? Poems don't need to be all deep sounding to express something. It's going to sound just like you're forcing it unless you really don't suck at it. Honestly, don't bother trying to like poems like this until you're on Yuri's level. Natsuki stops short all of a sudden. D don't tell me. Um, what? You're not, you're not just trying to impress Yuri, are you? What are you talking about? Keep your voice down. Definitely I'm trying to impress Yuri, and so far it's fucking working. So take that, Natsuki. <laughs> you know Yuri would love this kind of, this angsty... Hey, just because she's a talented writer and gorgeously beautiful and pleasant to be around doesn't mean that I... <sighs> Looks like I'm in trouble. Why? I'm not in trouble. I somehow struck a nerve, though what I did is beyond me. I didn't choose what? This girl? Bubblegum pink cutesy pants? I'm so done with you. Natsuki shoves the poem I handed her back over to me. Take your stupid poem. If you wrote it for someone else, just don't show it to me. Okay? Sold. This is what I get for letting a younger girl step into my business. Yeah, you know what? I'm glad I chose the older, more mature Yuri. She seems to be able to handle this relationship thing much better. Unless I was a mind reader, I was destined to be in a world of pain from the start. At least Natsuki wasn't really the girl I was trying to impress in the first place. Yeah, honestly, I'm surprised she hasn't taken me off to her kill dungeon and harvested my organs as trophies yet. Who should I show my poem to next? I don't know, Monica, I guess. Honestly, I really just want to bitch at Monica for cock blocking me back there. Hi, Pete. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, mostly I just came to talk to you about the cock blocking and the Yuri. And uh, could you fucking knock it off already? Being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people, I have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. Would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. No, let's talk about the cock blocking, though. Sure. No, don't go along with this narrator. We don't care about her poem. We want to talk about the C blocking. 
I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. This one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Oh, I've been finding inspiration in Yuri and not just her writing style, if you know what I mean. Which brings us back to the whole C-blocking thing, monocock block ya. I like Mon I like Monica's algae pool green eyes. No, this girl's name is Monocockblockia. That's her name from now on. Hmm, I guess so. Can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. Oh, me too. They warm my heart. My bitter black little heart grows three sizes every time Yuri's around. So does my penis. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I also noticed that, yes. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside of her. Or when she's giving me the side eye, that also is like a light turned on inside of her. Uh-huh. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. You know, I haven't really been having that much trouble, Monica, actually. In fact, I was about to get something a lot more personal than conversation out of her, and then you came along. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers. Hope you don't mean that in a bad way, because honestly, if you do, you're kind of talking shit about my girl. No, of course not. Yeah, damn right, of course not. Nobody talks shit about my girl. Nobody puts baby in a corner. I just meant that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself, but still defending her like that. She's my girl? Duh. You must be pretty into- Don't violently hurl your chest at me. You know I'm in a committed relationship, and the second you find out I'm in a relationship, what do you do? Start hurling your chest at me like that, coming on to me? <sighs> you know, Monica, I'm liking you less and less. That's a real catty kind of move right there. You completely misunderstood. No, she completely got it right. Don't tell her she misunderstood. Now you're just opening a door to give her more opportunities to cock block you under the guise of ignorance. Narrator, just come out and say, hell yeah, I'm into Yuri. Stop with the C-blocking, Monica. And stop trying to woo me away from the girl you know I'm in love with. Your aggressive breast thrusting is sexually threatening to me now. Ah, calm down. I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Uh, really? It better damn well be me. Yeah, a fictional one anyway. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but stop thrusting your breasts at me. Anything wrong with that? Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Yeah, just don't pin it to your chest and smash it into my face. Or, uh, you know what? Uh, go ahead. I mean, I'm going to pay later for that club anyway. The Lady Who Knows Everything An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer. All meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather. Last adrift the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains. The last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall. And I fall and fall and fall even more. Gentle as a feather. A dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger. The hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. Oh god, her eyes are soulless black pits. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning. There is no purpose. And we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. You know, for a nihilist work, it's actually kind of shitty. Give me some Sartre any day if I'm looking for nihilism. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sort of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about it. I see. It was like sort of mediocre. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there is one thing I noticed there. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. 
<laughs> Are you surprised? Well, yeah, it's kind of why I mentioned it, actually, Monica. I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Because, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Was that, like, a subtle inference to the fact that she is an elder abomination from beyond the pale lurking under the guise of human skin? That the tentacles are waiting to burst forth from inside of her and devour us in mass. Anyway, it's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, They'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way and will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. That was not a writing tip at all, Monica. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Well, Sayori, I guess you're uh, last on the block. It's nice, I guess. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. Mostly just because I broke your heart and decided I'm going to run off with Yuri. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think, because I hate you now. Like, you're dead to me, Pete. I never want to see or speak to you again. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Yes, I did write it for someone else. Probably Yuri. Um, don't act surprised, narrator. Come on. I didn't write this for... No, I did write it specifically for Yuri. It just got a little Sayori in it because I have difficulty telling the difference between Sayori words and Yuri words. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. It's okay. You're making new friends, just like I was hoping. I just kind of hoped that I would be that friend and that you would fall in love with me. And now I kind of want to boil your rabbit. What's wrong with Sayori's voice? This is the Sayori voice. It's the best I can do. It sounds like you aren't into the pink-haired girl, Pete. I still like Sayori, even if she's a little dumber. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Uh, yes, actually. I was deliriously happy when I was making time with Yuri a few minutes ago, and then Monica cock-blocked me, and now I'm here talking to you. So, yeah. I mean, I'm cool. Good! That's all that matters to me. I just want you to be happy, Pete. And let remind the fact that my heart is broken into 10,000 tiny little shards and that you've swept me aside and cast me out like yesterday's garbage. Is there something wrong, Sayori? Huh? No, nothing. Except for the broken heart and the garbage thing. I'm just a little tired of having my heart broken. <laughs> all right. Tell me if you need anything. Don't worry about me, okay? By the way, when you get home, if your rabbit's skin is on the floor and there's something in the pot on the stove, maybe don't look at it. <laughs> you can go play with everyone else now. If you inst ever see, this is the problem with Sayori. Every time I talk about another girl, she always encourages me to go hit on another girl. She's like, no, go play with everyone else now. I'm telling you, Sayori seems like she's in. She's into this whole. She's giving me permission for the whole open relationship thing, but then she's salty about it. You can't be both. If you're gonna be the swinger, you can't be salty about the fact that I'm swinging it, girl. What if the narrator is gay and that's why he isn't making a move on Yuri? Well, I mean, he kind of joined the wrong club. I think if he's into dudes, he should have join like i don't know uh let's see if the literature club is all girls then probably like chess club is all dudes then i guess yay i'm gonna go home a little bit early today so i don't have to watch you walk home with that tramp yuri also if i get home early i can beat you there so i can kill your rabbit tell monica i wasn't feeling well okay i'll see you tomorrow your rabbit won't see the morrow, though, because I'm going to kill it. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. She's off to kill my rabbit. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... 
hold on a second. If it's just me, or did you say something strange just now? Uh. Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Guri isn't immune to it. Uh, stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Uh, it seems you're right. Oh, God, we said the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here after we spent the whole day romancing Yuri. Now we just casually dismiss that whole romance. Monica Cock blocked us, stopped us from scoring with Yuri, and then we're an idiot and our trenchant mouth just threw away all the progress we made. You know, you're right to sigh, Monica. I'm a helpless idiot. The narrator isn't. He's a beyond a moron. Sarah always helps lighten the mood a bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. <laughs> Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Please, Natsuki, show some decency. Oh, come on. Uh, she wasn't feeling well and went home early. Or rather, I'm pretty sure she went home to kill and boil my rabbit, but, you know. Jilted lover's gonna, gonna boil. That's just the way it works. The rabbit boiler gonna boil. Is that so? I hope she's all right. Seriously? Of all times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Shouldn't you be happy about this, Nasuki? since like 10 minutes ago you couldn't wait to get on my jock? First of all, stop under misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Oh? That curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything's fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki, we've been making cupcakes. Of course she's making cupcakes. No doubt poisonous cupcakes filled with razor blade and cyanide. But we might need a lot of them in different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted! And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sarah will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri, she'll be making the beast with two backs and a sweaty pile with perfidious beat. Yuri, you can... Uh, um... Make the beast with two backs and a sweaty pile with perfidious beat, though. Don't hurl your chest at me right now, Monica. I am not having any of that. Guys, can you help me come up with something for Gary? Don't fucking slight my girl by not giving her a task, Monica. This is going to infuriate Pete. Nobody treats my dame like this. You understand? She's my lady now. You show her respect. Ah, I'm useless. See, look at this. You guys are fucking knocking her self-esteem. Don't listen to him, Yuri. They're just mad because you won my affection and they didn't. That's not it at all. Oh, I think that's it exactly, Monica. You're just mad. You guys are sour grapes and all over my girl, Yuri. I'm not having it. You're the most talented person here, you know. Damn Skippy. Yeah, suck it. Tough nuts to you, Suki. Truth hurts, don't it? Ha ha ha. Now, now, Natsuki's pouting, too. Even I can tell now. I mean, she's very clearly pouting. Come on, it's not like you're a subtle genius when it comes to interpreting human expressions. This is very clearly a pout face. Guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Ah, uh, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So, Yuri... This is what you give my girl, Yuri? Chat, I'm furious. The one nice thing she can say about my lady is that she has beautiful handwriting. 
You're on fucking thin ice, Monica. You hurl your chest at me again next time, I'm gonna punch you right in the tit.